Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Yaqat Zaman, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. What are we going through today? We are going through the Diwan of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. This is an amazing Diwan, which I'm sure many of you guys have heard before. And if you haven't heard about this Diwan, then please check out my series. You're going to see many, many videos, which I'm sure you will find beneficial. Alhamdulillah. Right, so today's poem, he says, قَدْ رَأَيْتُ الْقُرُونَ كَيْفَ تَفَانَتْ درست ثم قيل كان وكانت هي دنيا كحية تنفث السم وإن كانت المجسة لانت كم أمور وقد تشددت فيها ثم هونتها علي فهانت He says قد رأيت القرون So قرون is the gem of قرن قرن it can mean a time period, a large time period is called a Qarn, a generation like we say. So Qarn, like the Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِ The best of the generations is my generation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَ Then those who come after them and those who come after them. So this is known as the, um, what we call the, the word Qarn, which means generation. Now there's also another word, Qarn, which is the same word, which is used for another meaning, which means horns, like Dhul Qarnain, Qarn. So some say that he had the horns on his helmet, that's why they called him Dhul Qarnain. Allah knows best, but the word Qarn is generally used for these two meanings quite frequently. So Qad Ra'aytu, indeed, Qad, it comes for Tahqiq, Qad Ra'aytu, Ra'a ya ra, means to see, Ra'aytu, I saw, indeed I have seen al quruna the nations, the generations. Kayfa tafanat. Kayfa how. So kayfa is for istifham. Kayfa means how. Tafanat. Tafana is from the word fana yafni. Okay, fana yafni, which means to um, to become obliterated. End, finish, khalas, khatam. Nothing left. Tafana yatafana. So this is from the word tafa'ul. And because it's from the word tafa'ul, it has mubalagha in there. Absolutely became obliterated. Absolutely finished and there are no traces left of it. قَدْ رَأَيْتُ الْقُرُونَ Indeed, I have seen the generations. كَيْفَ tafanat. How did I see them? I saw them in respect in regards to how they diminished, deteriorated, broke up into pieces and no longer existed. Just like a big nation. You might have a massive nation out there. And at one point in time, it was running the world. Right? People from around the world were going to that place, maybe learning or maybe some other things. But subhanAllah, what happened? Its time came, its end came. And when its end came, we have no knowledge of that nation anymore. Or maybe we only have traces left, like some pottery or some buildings that are crumbling. That's what he's talking about. Kayfa tafanat. So because the word Qurun is Jama, we can use a single feminine tafanat for it. Right? So this is a rule which comes quite frequently in the Arabic language. Darasat. Yeah, so darasa, yadrusu, it has the mean to become obliterated, wiped away, when you wear something out. So if you use something again and again and again and again, you say this thing has darasa. Yeah, so darasa, yadrusu, it means to become like worn out by excessive usage and that's why the word dars comes from as well so dars is because when you're studying you're kind of wearing out that that sort of like knowledge in the sense that you're you're gaining acquiring it so darastu like you say this person is a mudarris the one that teaches people so darasat thumma qil now some version says durisat and that would be if we take the meaning of muta'addi. And darasat would simply just mean lazy meaning. It has become, yeah, it has become worn out. Thumma qila, and then it was said, kana wa kanat. Kana wa kanat. Kana means it was. Kanat means she was. Or it was. So what does this mean then? So what he is saying basically is that darasat, it has become obliterated, worn away as though there is nothing left. And then the people that came in the future, they said, so here 
I am saying the people in the future, but you're saying, but then why wouldn't it be thumma qalu or thumma yaquluna? Well, the reason is because the in the Arabic language you can use passive verbs to mean that kind of thing. Like, for example, you know, sometimes in English we might say things like, "It is said that you should do this." It's said that when you're driving your car, you should have your seatbelt on. It's said. And who has said that? The government has said it. So sometimes you might want to use a passive verb, but you don't want to mention the explicit word. So, thumma qila, and then it was said, kana wa kanat. So, well, why doesn't it just say, thumma qila kanat? First of all, obviously, it's trying to maintain the poem. And one thing to remember as well, just on a side note, when I say these poems are the poems of Sayyidina Ali uh, radiallahu anhu, what I don't mean they are 100% his, like, I don't, like, the Quran is 100% from Allah, and the Hadith are 100% from the Prophet Sallallahu But these poems, we're not 100% sure of whether they go back to Ali. So some people in the past have said they're his, but we're not 100% sure. So I would say just keep that in the back of your mind. Kana wa kanat. Kana wa kanat means that kana, it was, and it was, meaning it can either mean the nation was, and the nations were, or it could mean he was the guy that came. So someone, humans came and they went. And structures and societies came and they went. So kana wa kanat. That was there and it was there. He was there and she was there. So this is kind of like playing around with words in the Arabic language. So daras darasat thumma qila kana wa kanat. So kana wa kanat. Hiya dunya. It is a dunya. Dunya is the, from the word dunu, which means the clo closest thing. Dunya, closest thing. So the world is called the closest thing in respect to the akhirah, which is the furthest thing. Right. So what we are experiencing here is called dunya. Everything you see, you hear, you smell, you touch is called dunya because it's very close to you. Now here, normally we would say ad dunya with alif lam is in it. So maybe he has said here dunya is to show its vastness. It is such a world. It is such a life experience. Kahayatin, like ka, like hayya is a snake. Right. So a snake is called hayya. Now, if you know in the Quran, find me two places in the Quran where the word hayya has been used. Put it in the comments below. Let's see if you know. And the word hayya can also mean something living as well. Right. So, um, you know, like a man. A man obviously would be hay and a woman would be a hayya. That's like a little joke there. So don't take offense. So hayyatun is some, someone that is living, a female that is living. And a snake is also called hayya as well. And there's no, obviously there's no connection. So kahayyatun, and a snake is probably called living because when people used to see it moving around, you could see it's living, it's alive, like they say. Kahayyatun, like a snake, tanfuthu sum, nafatha is to spit up. If you know in the Quran where the word nafatha or yanfuthu is found, put it in the comments. You'll probably find one of its derivatives in the Quran. So let me know if you guys know exactly where this is. You can put it in the comments. So tanfuthu nafatha yanfuthu, which means to spit out sum. Sum is poison. Yeah, so sum, poison. Here dunya, it is a dunya. It is this massive dunya, this like really great dunya. Kahayyatin, like a snake. Tanfuthu, which spits out poison. وَإِن كَانَتِ الْمَجَسَّةُ لَانَتْ Even if, وَإِن, even if. It's called وَاو وَصْلِيَة or إِن وَصْلِيَة. كَانَتِ الْمَجَسَّةُ Majassa is from the word jassa يَجُسُّ Yeah, so jassa means to touch something. So if you if you touch something, you say jassahu. Right, so you felt it. So normally when you go to buy a cow or you go to buy a goat, you feel it, you touch it, you say jassahu. So in kanat al majassa, majassa is the place that is touched. Al majassatu, even if the place that is touched, lanat becomes soft. So what is he saying by this? He's saying it is the dunya, and the dunya is like a snake, this venomous snake, which spits out upon anyone, even humans. It spits out poison. Now it doesn't spit out poison. Um, it doesn't spit out poison because, you know, 
it's an enemy or something, it just spits out poison because that's its habit. That's what the dunya does to you. So when you live in the dunya, you don't even realize that the dunya is slowly poisoning you. It's killing you. وَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْمَجَسَّةُ لَانَتْ Even if the place that has been touched by the snake, or by the dunya in this case, is إِنْ كَانَتِ الْمَجَسَّةُ is soft. Even if the place is soft and hasn't done anything to you, the dunya will still poison you. The still will attack you and spit its venom onto you and, and, and make you go old and get diseased and die. This is what it does. كَمْ أُمُورٍ He then says, So لَانَ يَلِينُ is from the word to be soft, layin. Yeah. So if you know again in the Quran, this is a this is a nice day today, guys. I'm testing all of you guys on whether you guys know your Quran. So check out if you know where in the Quran the word lana yalinu or any of its derivatives there are. Kam umurin wa fiha. How many matters? Kam umurin. So kam umurin. So the word kam in the Arabic language can come for two meanings. One is when you're asking someone a question, what you do there is the word after it, you make it mansub. Kam kitab and indak. How many kitab, how many books are with you? Or you could have the word after kam to be majroor. Right? So then it would have the meaning of khabar. You're saying, how many books have I got? How many people came today? Like Meaning lots of people came today. I have lots of books. Kam umurin. How many matters? How many, 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 many matters? وَقَدْ تَشَدَّدْتُ فِيهَا Which indeed I had been very strict upon. I had been very harsh upon. Strict in the dunya, living my life. And I was strict upon how I had my regime, my routine, and how I used to do things. تَشَدَّدْ is from the word shadad. Shadda yashuddu means to tie a knot in something or to tie something. And again, if you know in the Quran where this is, you know what to do. Fiha in regards to those umur, those matters, fiha. How many matters had I been very strict upon? Thumma hawantuha. And then hawana yuhawinu tahween. Hawn means to be like soft and and timid and like that. And hawana yuhawin to make something soft, to make something humble. Hawantuha, then I made those matters, I became less strict. Alayya upon myself for Hanat and then those matters became easy for me. Hana Yahunu it means to become soft or easy or um, opposite of harsh and strict. So in other words, in life, if you live a very, very strict life, you know, you can't last forever. You can't keep it up. There's gonna become a time where you have to, you know, start to become softer. And it happens you see people very, very harsh in how they approach things. Then all of a sudden this is how the dunya works. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu is giving this analogy, is giving this understanding of remember, nothing lasts forever. There's always a peak and then it always starts to drop. So even the nations that came before, they were at their mightiest, the strongest, but then they became weak and they finished. And likewise is the dunya. The dunya will slowly poison you and will weaken you, weaken you, weaken you. Eventually nothing's left of you as well. So He's saying, this is, I've experienced this myself. There was a time when I was very strict and punctual and, and I was so, so um, strict, harsh in the way I used to do things. And then all of a sudden it started to become weak. Yeah. So I think this is a very important poem because it kind of gives us a different angle in how we look at dunya. So we need to remember that we're not always going to be in this prime. or We're not always going to be doing the number of hours that we can do. Sometimes you're studying and you think, you know what, I'm in my... A prime. Remember, you, that's not going to last always. Always try to take the benefit so that later on when you become weaker or illness hits you, then you're able to manage. May Allah make it easy for us. So, anyway, so I just want to point out a few words like Hayyatun tanfusu sum. This is a nice expression. This is a snake that spits out poison. So you might want to add this to your vocabulary. Hayyatun tanfusu sum. And lanat as well. Lana yalino. It's a nice word. To become soft. Hawantuha alayya fahanat. Hawana fahanat. So if you guys have done sarf, then you'd know that this is where you're using the same root words, but you're using two different barbs of the fil. Yeah, so this is what we call mutawa'a. Hawantuha fahanat. 
I softened it and it became soft. I made it easy and it became easy. Okay, anyway, I hope you guys benefit from that. Let's do a bit of Arabic then. يقول سيدنا علي رضي الله عنه لقد قد رأيت القرون كيف تفانت أنا قد شاهدت بنفسي بمشاهدة الآثار التي أمر بها في الأسفار رأيت القرون الماضية مثل الفراعنة وغيرهم رأيتهم قد تفانت أنهم لم يبقى منهم أحد اليوم كأن لم تغنى بالأمس كأن هذا الأرض لم تغنى بالأمس درست يعني إذ محلت ذهبت الآثار كلما كان عندهم من البيوت ومن المستشفيات ومن ومن المعابد الآن أصبحت كل شيء رمال ثم قيل ثم قال الناس الذين جاءوا بعدهم كان وكانت هذا كان في الزمن الماضي وكانت هكذا وكان هكذا وكان 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 واليوم لم يبقى منهم شيء ألا نحن على وجه الأرض مسيطرين على الأرض هي دنيا يقول هذه هي الدنيا يعني حقيقة الدنيا هذا يعني الشيء لا يبقى لا يدوم من أول إلى آخره لا يدوم كحية تنفث السم مثل هذا الحيوان الصعبان الحية الذي عندما يأتي عند حيوان آخر تخرج لسان لسانه وتنفث السم وتنفث هذا المادة القاتلة في لسانها أو في أسنانها يعني تنفثه تخرجه حتى يقع على الحيوان أو الإنسان وعندما هذا السم يدخل ويقع على على الآخر يصبح هذا الشخص أو هذا الحيوان ضعيف جدا وممكن يموت وإن كانت المجسة لانت يعني وإن كانت المجسة وإن كانت المكان الذي لمسه أو وقع عليه السم لانت صارت لين جدا يعني ممكن شخص يظن نعم هذا الحية لماذا لماذا الحية تنفث السم آه علي وأنا شخص يعني ما ما أفعل شيء بالحية يعني ما أقتلها ولا شيء لا هكذا الدنيا الدنيا الإنسان يحسب أن الدنيا تحبه والدنيا تعامله معاملة جيدة من أول الولادة إلى آخر لكن الحقيقة لا ليس الأمر هكذا الحقيقة أن الإنسان الدنيا لا تدع أحد يبقى في ذروة كماله وقوته وعلمه وغير ذلك لا بل الدنيا يضعفه كما قد ورد في القرآن أيضا أن الله سبحانه وتعالى خلق الإنسان من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعف وشيبا كم أمور يقول كم أمور يعني كم من أمر كم من أشياء التي نحن جربناها جربتها قد تشددت فيها قد كنت تشد متشدد فيها يعني قد كنت غير متساهل فيها قد كنت أفعلها باهتمام جدا ثم هونتها علي ثم أنا بنفسي بسبب الأمور والأمراض وغير ذلك مما اعتراني هونتها علي جعلتها سهلة علي فهكذا الأمور أصبحت سهلة علي جزاكم الله خير guys I hope you guys benefit from this video it's been a while since we made a video on D1 Ali let me know in the comments if there's any suggestions any questions that you guys might have and inshallah I will see you guys next time thank you very much my patrons as well for your beautiful wonderful support that you guys show and love you show my channel may Allah bless all of you people and it means a lot to me that you guys are supporting my channel and honestly from the depths of my heart I'm really grateful for all of the support that you show if there's anyone else out there who wants to support my channel and help you can support my channel through the uh, Patreon links or the PayPal links whatever amount you guys want to give Alhamdulillah it's something which supports my channel and I really really appreciate it, it means a lot to me and uh, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you guys next time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh